Okay, hello listeners, it's Let's Learn Sumo. I'm Clayton. Welcome back to the podcast. Don't forget to join me at Instagram, Let's Learn Sumo, or Twitter. Have a bit of a chat with me there. We are at day 9 and 10 of the November Basho in Fukuoka in Kyushu, the island of Kyushu in southern Japan. Beautiful part of the world. If you ever get to Japan, make sure you go down that way. Uh, they do like the Christmas lights in uh, Fukuoka. I was there at Christmas at one point a few years back. Anyway, let's have a look at day 9 and 10. We're getting towards the pointy end of this tournament and uh, I don't think our Ozeki is going to make his uh, Yokozuna promotion. That rope is just a little bit further away, but uh, a couple of decent days. You never know. He's still there or thereabouts. I, uh, my view about who's going to win the tournament hasn't overly changed a lot. I still think Kitashima is probably our man to beat at this stage. There's plenty of people with him after day 10, but uh, to me, I think the Ozeki Kirishima just has his whereabouts, and I think he'll uh, he'll probably be pushed through. I think he uh, looks a bit more serious in the last few days. He got a bit of a lucky win on day 9, but uh, he certainly did the business on day 10. So let's have a quick look at day 9, some of the matches in day 9, and we'll get uh, on to day 10 in a moment. So Nishiki Fuji, he's in deep trouble at this point of the tournament. He's not uh, punching out too many wins. He wasn't quick enough. Uh, Koto Shoho came up from Jurio because there's a spare spot because Asanayama came back from Kyujo. So he creates a buy, which means someone from Jurio comes up to fill that bottom spot. Nishiki Fuji is the lucky man to face a Jurio man, but he wasn't quick enough to react to Koto Shoho's lateral move. And he gets a Yorikiri that makes one more loss, gets him to a, kachiko, uh, a Makekoshi, a losing record for Nishiki Fuji. Look, it's looking really dangerous for him. I would suggest uh, he is likely to be heading back to Jurio himself. Kita Nawaka versus Tsurugisho. Suda Gisho just lifted Kita Nawaka out, holding his belt with both hands. Uh, Kita Nawaka, he's probably heading back to Jurio as well, the way he's going at the moment. Takara Fuji versus Tohaka Kuryu. Tohaka Kuryu, he tried a barrage of Supari thrusting really fast, but they were mostly ineffective. Takara Fuji just absorbed them. He didn't seem to go anywhere. He gave him a, he gave uh, Tohaka Kuryu a few shoves for an Oshidashi. Just no power in his throws. His thrusting there, Ichiya Momoto and Tamawashi. Ichiyamoto gets his kachikoshi, gets his winning record of eight wins. He had a really explosive touchy eye, some really big neck thrusts and shoves, and Tamawashi just goes straight back out for a Tsukiyatoshi thrust out. Ichiyamoto after day nine, eight and one in the lead by himself for this basho. Oho and Tomokaze. Tomokaze got a good touchy eye. Tomokaze was under pressure, but he moved a bit laterally to get himself some room. He went forward, and Oho gets a sideways move, a grab, and Tomokaze goes down. Sukiyatoshi faceplant for Tomok uh, for Tomokaze. Uh, Roga and Hiradumi. Hiradumi is looking very motivated. He is loving his home crowd. He got a win up about day three and. The crowd, being a local, they were very happy about it and they let him know. So he seems to have taken a bit of power from that uh, crowd movement and that crowd support. He got an outside left. He swung Roger around, but he just couldn't finish him off Roger. He, he said he's half Russian, half Mongolian. He got a bit off balance uh, and it was enough that uh, Hiradumi got a Yoriteyoshi crush out. That big round belly of his helps him perform that. Next up, Endo and Churunumi. Endo moved quickly and got Churunumi under pressure. Churunumi defended. Uh, as he went backwards, he got an arm under Endo's shoulder. And unfortunately, Endo goes down for a Katasukashi swing down. For all Endo's not having a great tournament here. He's had a couple of good months and it just seems to be falling apart here for him a little bit. Sadanumi and Kimbozan uh, both got a grip off the touch eye, 
back to the Tarawara Bales and Sadanumi tried to swing Kinbozan, but Kinbozan swings around the Medigary round and dispatched Sadanumi out. Sadanumi looked nonplussed at that loss. He thought he had Kinbozan out. It was an Uchari backwards pivot throw. And basically, you know, it's, a, it's basically a merry-go-round. Um, Sadanumi was back at the bale, swung Kinbo around. Kinbo stopped and swung him out. And uh, that is your Uchari. A very good move by uh, Sadan, uh, by uh, Kimbo Zan. He's showing a bit of uh, form this tournament. Hokseho versus Koto Echo. Hokseho uses his reach, the big long reach of the over two meter high man to get a front grip. And he just forced Koto Echo back to the bales. Koto Echo to his... To his credit, he defended and stopped the momentum, and uh, but he couldn't stop that bulk. And Hokseho pushed again and got uh, got him this time. Koto Echo couldn't wrap his leg around uh, Hokseho fast enough to stop him being lifted out for Yorikiri. Uh, Ryu then versus Takanosho. Neither got a really good belt grip, but it was a pretty strong wrestle. Takanosho disengaged and pushed Ryuden down for a Sukiyatoshi pushdown. Uh, Shonanumi versus Miri, Mirigiyu. Sorry, let me try that. Miyugiryu. Uh, Shonanumi got a right belt grip for a bit of an easy Yorikiri there. Uh, Midori Fuji backing up after some good wins versus Mitakayumi. Midori Fuji defended fairly well. He escaped at the bales. Look, I actually think in one of the uh, replays, I actually thought uh, Midori might have stepped out at that point. Uh, but he got an underarm grip back in the centre on Mitakayumi, a big man. Uh, they locked up. Mid- Midori Fuji tried to throw, but Mitakayumi, he was just a bigger bulk. He gripped both Midori's arms. Uh, he's probably got about 60 kilos on him and forced him back for a Yorikiri push out. A uh, bit of a shame there for Midori Fuji. He did have a fair chop at that one. A no-sho versus our uh, one of the men in uh, not in the lead, but in that leading group. Two big men together. A no-sho just got his momentum and balance mixed up a bit as Atami Fuji sensed he was going a bit too far forward and got a Hitaki Komi slap down. Uh, Takiyasu, the big bear versus a flying monkey. Takiyasu chased Tobizaru. He was retreating hard, making Takiyasu chase him around. The Gyoji kind of buggered it up for him, actually. The Gyoji got in, I think he got hit probably twice, and uh, Tobizaru gave the uh, Gyoji a little bit of stink eye when he went out, Yodakiri. Uh, I don't think he appreciated the uh, the referee getting in the way there. Uh, Masaya, uh, Mese uh, got Gonayama. Uh, Shodai beat Hokto Fuji. A little bit of an Oshidashi. Really big touchy eye from Hokto Fuji. I think he's trying to compensate for a few losses by uh, getting out of the touchy eye really fast. He got a, a big Nodawa neck thrust on Shodai. Uh, but he reacted and put Hokto Fuji under pressure. And an extra shove just pushed Hokto Fuji out Oshidashi. Uh, Ura versus Abi. Ura has been going in really low at the touchy eye in every match. He's almost down at their waist, and I'm surprised no one's tried to just uh, step back and maybe not hanker him, but at least uh, Hitaki Komi slap him down because he's he's very low and getting a lot of momentum forward. Anyway, uh, he stayed low. Uh, Abi pushed down. Ura pulled back, and he got a Hikiyatoshi pull down uh, after he pulled his arm and got Abi off balance enough that he went down. So Ura gets a win there. Uh, into our uh, Sekiwake, Daishio, uh, Daesho, sorry, I can't get my pronunciation right tonight. Daesho and Wakamoto Haru. Uh, the Daesho started the threshing machine as Wakamoto Haru responded. Uh, and like we've said before, Daesho gets a little bit too far in front of his feet. Wakamoto Haru saw it. He sidestepped for uh, Hitaki Komi as Daisho went flying off into the crowd as his front lean was just a bit too far. Wakamoto Haru helped him and Daisho just couldn't put the brakes on. Uh, Wakamoto Haru gets a much needed win there and that got him to, uh, I think, four wins on day nine. Another big match into the Ozeki and former Ozeki. Asanayama would still be in Ozeki if he didn't... Uh, do some naughty things under COVID and get himself a one-year suspension. Osama Yama, he had Kirishima under pressure. They gripped and they broke again. Uh, Osama Yama 
went chasing and he goes parallel to almost go face down. He went really hard. Asayama just seemed to get a hand down a moment before Kitashima's foot went down as he was retreating. Uh, tried to get a, uh, a throw from a body grip a few times, but Asayama was just too strong. Uh, that Kitashima retreat uh, and the pull as he went backwards, uh, they, the judges had a mono e conference and confirmed that Kitashima, who got the uh, got the fan in the first place, uh, they confirmed that Kitashima had that. He did have to work hard for that, and he uh, Asanayama really showed that he's uh, still Ozeki and he's still very strong. Uh, and Kitashima couldn't finish him off without that. So a bit of a lucky Hitaki Komi there for uh, Kitashima. Not an easy win. Takakesho for the last battle of the night versus Nishikigi. It's a really big thrusting battle. Uh, both very big men as Takakesho went all in. And to Nishikigi's credit, he absorbed those hits. Uh, Nishikigi started to get some momentum and Takakesho retreated for a moment. But then he took a big step and let Nishikigi go forward. And as he did, he gave him a bit of a pull and Nishikigi went forward. Flying forward for a head front heavy landing, Hikiyatoshi. Uh, that was the end of day nine. Day 10, well, unfortunately, day 10 saw Koto Eko, uh, our big shoulder man. He went Kujo due to a bad knee, so he's out for the tournament. Well, we think the tournament, we haven't heard anything different. So day 10 action, we had a big matchup in uh, lower area of Megashira, Hirata Umi. Matched up with Ichi Yamamoto, our current soul leader on uh, 8 and 1. Ichi Yamamoto comes back to the crowd with two losses now. Hiradumi used his home crowd advantage for a bit of motivation. He seemed to be feeding off the big reception and he used his weight to barge. Excuse me, barge uh, Ichi Yamamoto out. Uh, that big belly is helping him achieve that. So Ichi Yamamoto comes back to the crowd. Ryuden beat Tamawashi. Ryuden's having a pretty good uh, tournament here. Lots of thrusting, a really big nod or a neck thrust from uh, Tamawashi. Ryuden resisted. He got a, a left grip and forced Tamawashi back, got him a little bit upright, and they go down at the edge. Tamawashi landed really awkwardly on the edge. Ryuden gets that win. I hope Tamawashi's okay because it was a really nasty landing there. Uh, Surugisho beats Hokuseiho. If you haven't seen this uh, replay, go and see this one. This is a pretty good one. There's not often you can see Hokuseiho, all of 160, 170 kilos of him, get lifted bodily off the ground. It needs someone as big as to, uh, Surugisho to do it. Surugisho got a double grip on him and lifted him clean out. Uh, Hokuseiho went for that right arm grip and tried a bit of a lean uh, Megi, uh, Megi Yotsu grip. I just think he needs a bit more offence, a little bit more uh, go forward early in the match. He, you could see he was really just looking to go for that lean early and it didn't work. Someone got him, lifted him and out he went. Big lift. Uh, Churanumi lost to Mitakayumi. Another leader goes down, one spot on the leaderboard. Next big match, Atami Fuji uh, beat Shonanumi. Atami Fuji got some really good thrusting, some really good go forward in this match, and he was just too fast, too strong for Shonanumi. He showed some really good uh, power. I think one of the NHK uh, commentators in Japanese was really not very fussed on Atami Fuji, but I think Atami Fuji is proving him wrong by the way he's going about his uh, sumo. Very standard sort of, you know, big body sumo, good power, good thrusting. Uh, I, I uh, think everyone's enjoying Atami Fuji doing his thing. Uh, Kimbozan beats Takara Fuji. Uh, and the next matchup was Midori Fuji versus Takiyasu the Big Bear. Look, it's a really it's, it's a pretty big mismatch here. Midori Fuji all about 110, 115 kilos. Takiyasu must be pushing the scales at about 170, 180 kilograms. Big man. Uh, look, they've got a good touchy eye, a bit of thrusting. Big nasty Nottawa neck thrust to Midori's neck. Uh, pushed him back to the bales, but um, Midori Fuji is pretty quick. And I, I remember sitting there watching, thinking, you need to move laterally fast, Midori. And he did. He moved sideways. Another Nottawa. And Takiyasu got a one-handed grip on Midori Fuji's belt as he tries to escape the grip. 
Uh, he retreated, turned, and somehow Takayasu lost that grip. Uh, he got a pretty good two-handed grip at one stage, went back to one-hand grip, and as Midori Fuji moved quickly across the ring, he somehow let go of it, and that allowed Midori Fuji to get an armbar onto Takayasu, and the momentum took him down uh, front in a Kotanage. It was a quite the escape from Midori Fuji for that win. That gets him to seven wins, one more for his uh, Kachikoshi winning record, and that'll be, what, day 11. So he's still got a few matches there to get himself to a, a double figure, and certainly he's in that uh, one back from the, the leading group. So uh, I don't know that he'll win, but he's certainly going to give himself a, a good chance of being in that group towards the end. Tobizaru versus Onosho. Onosho put Tobizaru under pressure here, and Tobizaru went laterally, moved sideways, and he turned it around on Onosho for a good body push, Yorikiri. Uh, I don't think Onosho knew that one was coming. Uh, Shodai versus Meisei, really good touchy eye. Meisei eventually got a right grip and went for an uh, Watanage at the ring as they both went over the edge. And it just appeared that uh, Shodai touched the side of the ring first. Uh, the Gyoji referee was looking really hard at that, and he pointed the uh, the fan at Meisei's end. They had a quick mono-e and decided that, yes, Shodai had touched out first. Uh, Shodai's reaction was pretty good. He kind of gave a bit of a wry smile. He's another crowd favourite. He's a local, and they're quite enjoying Shodai and his action this week. Look, Shodai's put on a pretty good... Uh, effort this tournament. He's a uh, little bit more go forward compared to the last few tournaments. Uh, I'm quite enjoying the way he's going about his sumo at the moment. Ura versus Hokuto Fuji. Hokuto Fuji's not having a good match at the moment. He's uh, not enjoying his November in Fukuoka. Uh, Ura went for a low thrusting battle. Hokuto Fuji went all in as Ura grabbed an arm, pulled him past and gave him a final rear push out to make Hokuto Fuji's week worse. Kotonowaka versus Gonoyama. Kotonowaka kind of waited for Gonoyama at the touchy eye and Gonoyama pushed him back, but Kotonowaka got a left belt grip which allowed a decent Watanage throw for Kotonowaka to take that win. Daesho with a few cupping marks on his back. I'm wondering if he's got a bit of a back soreness there. He met up with Asanayama. The threshing machine charged forward and Asanayama couldn't stop the momentum. Oshidashi. Uh, look, I did. I watched the replay of this one again and I watched Asanayama. He really tried to get in close to beat that threshing, the, the Sapari thrusting. Uh, but as Daesho goes forward, he just got a bit of a head to the chest. Uh, from Daesho, which stood him up and just took him off his balance. Uh, so good win there from Daesho. I don't know that he meant to uh, headbutt him in the chest, but uh, that's what eventually got him there. Next up, our Sekiwake Wakamoto Haru, who's not having a good week of it, and our Ozeki Hoshoryu, who's also not having a fantastic week. Uh, four and five for Wakamoto Haru, still on a losing run here. Hoshoryu on six and three. Um... Wakamoto Haru tried for a double grip and ended up with one hand. Ashoryu got a, a right grip to Wakamoto's left grip. Ashoryu then converted to a double rear grip and went for an, an Watanage belt throw. They both went flying out of the ring and landed hard in front of the judge. The Gunbai went to Ashoryu, the Gunbai fan, pointed to Ashoryu's end, but for all money, I could not pick it. Uh, either way, uh, I did see Wakamoto Haru trying to protect his entire body and head from going down first and put his an arm down and maybe that's what decided it. But funnily enough, there was no Mono E Judges Conference there. They seemed very confident that uh, Wakamoto Haru had gone down first there and Hoshoryu got the win, Yori Tayoshi. Yeah, like I said, I watched the replay and I still can't really pick it, so... Uh, Good win there for Hoshoryu. Gets him to seven wins. One more for his Kachikoshi. Uh, Wakamoto Haru, he has some serious work to do in the last five days. He can only afford to drop one more match as the tournament goes along. Kirishima faced up to Nishikigi. Uh, initial hit. Uh, they both pushed hard. Kirishima moved and pulls Nishikigi's arm to get behind him for a fairly easy push-out, a kuridashi rear push-out for Kirishima. That keeps him in the now-leading group. 
Uh, Tucker Keisho, the last match for the day. Uh, false start. No mutter, but a bit of a false start there. RB was ready to go, and Tucker Keisho kind of maybe balked him a little bit. Look, it was a pretty decent touchy eye. Some pretty good pushing, and Nadawa to Abi's neck, and he got back to the bales, and so that forced him to push hard forward, and Tucker Keisho just backed off for a Hitaki Komi as Abi eats dirt. So that leaves us with our leaderboard. Is eight and two is the leaderboard score with Kirishima, who our Ozeki, a Tami Fuji doing really well. I'll be interested to see a Tami Fuji and Kirishima at some point this week. Uh, Ichi Yamamoto is still now in that leading group, but he's no longer on his own. And Kotonowaka sitting at eight and two, which leaves uh, some. Whoops, let me just go back to my notes here. So uh, our seven wins, our Ozeki Takakesho and Hoshoryu on seven wins. Midori Fuji, Magashira 5 on seven wins, looking for one more for his Kachikoshi. Ryuden, who I said he's having a pretty good tournament. Funnily enough, who's who snuck himself into seven wins? It's the local boy, Hiradumi. Big Round Belly Man is now on seven wins. And Churanumi doing really well at Magashira 15 on seven wins. A couple of people with a bit of work to do. Daesho, six wins. Takayasu, Nishikigi, Shonanumi, Kinbozan, Mitakayumi, Oho, Tamawashi and Tomokaze. All these guys are on six wins. Still in with a chance. But uh, I would think that uh, our favourites at this point of the tournament certainly are Kirishima, Kota no Waka. Look, the way Atami Fuji is going about his work, I think he's certainly a good chance of being in that leading group at the end of the tournament. Ichi Yamamoto, a little skinny leg man. Um, as I said, he's not really faced anyone. Uh, he faced Hiradumi today, which is Magashira 11. It's probably one of the, the higher guys he's faced so far, and that's the way these things work. The lower guys come in, and if they're really good and coming off a hot bit of form in Jurio, they tend to uh, face a lot of the lower order guys, get themselves into... Uh, a chance of the Yusho going into the final days when they start facing the big names. Uh, so Takakesho, look, the rope is not out of his entire reach yet at seven wins and three losses, but uh, I would think he wouldn't want to lose another match if he wants to give himself a chance for uh, Yokozuna promotion. Ashoryu, look, a little bit inconsistent the last few days. Uh and I would think tonight's win, whilst he was probably a bit lucky to win tonight, uh, will will help him along. Midori Fuji showing his good form. He is an absolute pocket rocket. Uh, Ryuden in some good form this tournament, coming good at the right end of the tournament. Uh, Hiradumi started with three losses and now, uh, what's that, six, seven wins on the trot for Hiradumi. Uh, doing really well. And Churanumi just punching out his seven wins uh, with a loss here and there. So, yes, uh, we're heading into the last, uh, what, five days of this tournament. Uh, this could be exciting. Uh, there's certainly plenty of people capable of winning this. And I think at this stage, we've got about, uh, what's that, four, eight, ten people within two win within a win of each other. This last few days should be very interesting. I hope you all enjoy this November tournament uh, as we go into the end of the year. I certainly am going to enjoy the last few days. Anyway... Hakiyo listeners, let's learn sumo. Hey!